Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to play the Taverns of Tiefenthal. Uh, this is a game by Wolfgang Warsh, who has quickly become a, a designer that I really look forward to uh, playing his games. Uh, he designed the Quacks of Quedlinburg, which is one of my all-time favorites right now. I love that game. So I've been very, very excited to get my hands on this one. So, uh, just a, a couple of notes here. First of all, um, this video, in this video, I'm only going to be playing the base version of the game. So there are like four additional like mini expansions you can add into the game. In this video, I'm just playing the base. But I will also be playing uh, the game with all of the modules included. So uh, this game is going to be really to teach people how to play the base game in case you are new to this game. Uh, but if you're more interested in seeing the modules version, check out a link in or check out the link in the description of this video. I also have a storage solution I'm pretty proud of. You can see that in the setup videos um, and or you can go check out my website at tomteachesgames.com and you can kind of check out a storage solution because there are lots and lots of pieces here. But with all of that said, let me teach you how to play the Taverns of Tiefenthal. I don't know how to pronounce it. Up here we have the general play area and then we have each player uh, with their own taverns. And essentially, we are competing uh, to have the highest reputation in eight rounds. So reputation is going to be seen in this crest symbol here. And so this game is like part deck building, part dice drafting, which is a really interesting combination, which is why I'm so excited to play it. But essentially, we're going to be trying to earn as many of these cards as we can because they have reputation on them. More on that in a second. And there's gonna be a lot of different ways to do that. So that's the general idea. We're gonna to try to get these cards into our decks as we're playing. At the end of eight rounds, we're gonna look through our deck of cards, count up our reputation points. Person with the most reputation is the winner. So because our main focus is on getting the best cards, let's start here. In this game, there's gonna be two currencies we earn each round. We're gonna earn money, and we're gonna earn beer. And then we're going to use the money and the beer to get these different cards. So down here, we're gonna use the money we collect. So the cost of these cards is right here. We're gonna use the money we collect in order to improve our tavern. We can have a, oh, I think this guy's called a barracks. I don't know what that word means, but I'm gonna go for it. This guy's gonna provide more beer. Uh, we can get a dishwasher, we can get a waitress, we can add more tables, and we can increase our beer supplier. So we're going to spend our money to get these things, and you can see that they are worth victory points at the end of the game. We can also use the beer in order to recruit new guests. So we have a whole bunch of guests here. These four guests are randomized from this deck of, card right here. Deck of cards. Doesn't look like it, but I promise they were shuffled. We also have kind of a cheaper guy. There's a stack of these cheaper guys. These guys only cost three beer to recruit them. And then we have this huge stack of royal cards. They are all identical, but they're 10 points each. So while having all of these cards is really nice, our big goal is to try to get some royal cards. And there's gonna be two main ways to do that in this base game. Again, same thing, playing off of the beer and the coins. If we have a lot of beer in a round, we can convert those beers into royals. We're also gonna be moving around this monastery track if we by chance get to the end, which is really tricky to do with the base game, but it's possible, uh, we would gain a royal for moving all the way around this track. So that's how you can spend beer to get royals. There's also this thing where you can upgrade a part of your tavern in order to earn a royal. So for, the, for coins, if you have a bunch of coins, you can upgrade these different parts of your taverns. Anywhere you see these coins on these pieces, those things can be upgraded. And anytime you upgrade, not only is your tavern getting better, but you're gonna pick up a Royals card, which will be points at the end of the game. So that's kind of our main objective. Now, I find it best when teaching this game to go through the phases and explain the phases as you go. Some of these things happen simultaneously, 
Some of them happen in player or order. This beer here is showing that the blue player is the first player. It's normally a 3D piece with like another piece here and it stands up, but I thought it looked a little bit nicer like this. So when you're gonna play this game, and this is how I'm gonna teach you, we are going to all at the same time flip over this deck of cards that's been shuffled. Now, I would say in the first round, we should do this one player at a time, but there's one thing we need to do before we get started. We need to show that we're in the first round. So I'm gonna take this round marker. Again, this is usually something that stands up. I actually prefer to lay it down because I think it looks a little bit nicer. But as this thing moves to the first round, each player is gonna collect one of these tokens. These are double-sided. It doesn't matter for these specific tokens what side you put it on, but each player needs to collect one. So they're just gonna come here and they're eating with you at your counter. I love the art. I love the pieces in this game. I think it is so fun. Again, when you bring this to you, it really doesn't matter which way you put it. Uh, you'll be able to choose which side you spend it. So whatever. So let's bring this to the blue player. And in this first phase of the game, I'm about to start. What we're gonna do is you're gonna flip over your cards one at a time and place them in your tavern wherever they belong. And so, uh, like I said, it, this normally happens simultaneously, but the first time we play it, I would say you go one player at a time to help them know where to put stuff. So we're gonna flip this card over, and this is a guest, and you can see how the artwork matches this. We're gonna place this guest at this empty table right here. Then we're gonna keep flipping cards, and we're gonna keep flipping until we fill up all three tables. When that happens, you stop. So we're gonna flip one more time. All right, and we've got a waitress this time. We don't have another guest. So the waitresses are actually gonna go right here. And for the most part, the artwork is really gonna help guide you on where things go. So the waitress goes right here. We'll talk about what the waitress does a little bit later. For now, we're just gonna fill up our tavern with workers and guests and all of that stuff, and we'll go from there. Flip over the next card. Oh, sweet, we got an empty table empty tables go right here. They're gonna continue the line, which means we're gonna be able to draw more cards because we stop when we fill up our tables. All right, now we got another guest. And finally, we have another guest. Okay, so at this point, we stop. Now, if you want to, you could spend this token in order to, it's like a mulligan, to discard everything you just drew and do it one more time. Or you could spend this token to raise, um, move your disc on the monastery track. We'll talk about that later. But for now, I think the blue player is pretty happy with the way that things turned out. Okay, so the red player, exact same thing. Flip over their cards one at a time. We'll stop when the tables are full. So flip, flip, and all right, we got a guest here. Now there are other cards in there. There's not just guests. You could accept that. But like I said, I think I want more things available. It's really important, I think, to get a good start in this game, just strategically. So I'm gonna have the red player go ahead and spend this token, and they're just gonna discard it. And we're gonna go ahead and discard these three cards, and we're gonna try again. So, put these in my discard pile, which is right here. I'm trying to get this out of the way. All right, and let's go again. Okay, so we've got a guest. If I get the guests again, that's gonna be rough. Okay, cool. So we got a beer supplier. That person's gonna come down here. And then we've got another guest and another guest. All right, well, at least we got another, uh, another card this time. We got a beer supplier. All right, so that's the end of the first phase. The first phase is you're going to flip over your cards until your tables are full. Oops. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our dice drafting phase. So for this part, each player is gonna roll the four white dice in front of them that are on these coasters. And we're just gonna go ahead and put these on the coasters for right now. So for the red player, let's keep those dice there. The blue player is gonna do the same thing. Go ahead and give those a roll. And you're gonna notice that the blue player also gets to roll one more die because of their waitress. So we're gonna take a blue die roll it, and we'll just keep it here in the tavern somewhere so that we remember. So these stay up here until you have waitresses. That's gonna give you an extra die to use. All right, next part of the game is we've gotta pick a die and decide what we wanna do with it. Now you don't really have to decide what you're doing with it right this second. What we're gonna do is essentially pick 
one die from this coaster, one from the other coaster, one from this, one from that. So we're drafting dice. And then essentially we're gonna end up assigning the dice. Now, when I draft the dice, I kind of like to place the dice where I think I'm gonna use them. Just be aware, you are welcome to move those dice at any time. So let's talk about what these different things do. These cards here, well, the blue player only drew these twos. There are other cards there too. Essentially, I could assign the number two to any one of these cards, and in, the, in a later phase, I'm gonna gain two coins for that. So that's what those cards are right there. I could assign a die of any value and get one coin from this cash register. So you can see there's like this green arrow. Most of the green arrows are gonna have like a one X. That means you put one die, you can do that one time. But there are some dice that have these dots. So here I could put as many five dice, so dice with the number five, on here to raise my, or to move my disc on the monastery track. So this monastery track is relatively simple. We're just gonna move our discs around here. We're gonna get different benefits as we hit these different places. And yeah, so that's an option if I have uh, the number five on a die. I do wanna point out though that there were no fives rolled, so chances are we're not gonna see that happen this round. Okay, so where are some other places we could put dice? Notice this is not a place to put any dice. This just tells you you gain a die. All right, so we got those places here, this one here, this one here. If you put a die of any number on this spot, you can gain a beer. In this spot, you can put ones or sixes, as many as you want, and you'll gain a beer. So the blue player is gonna keep that in mind, and in turn order, this dice drafting doesn't happen uh, all at the same time, this happens in turn order. So building your tavern, that happens all at the same time. Rolling the dice, that's all at the same time. And then the game kind of pauses, and in turn order, each player is going to pick one die and just kind of put it under their board. But like I said, I'm going to put it on a spot as a place that I plan to use it. So early game, fives, ones, sixes, twos, those are going to be great for the blue player. So I'm going to have the blue player go ahead and take one of these twos. Chances are really good that they're going to put it on uh, that guest right there. Now, if you're wondering why this doesn't happen simultaneously, like why isn't everyone just drafting and passing? I think it's just because you could really change your strategy depending on the dice that are left over. That's kind of a big thing. Um, I, on Twitter, was talking about this like, it's like the game Azul. Um, in the game Azul, in a two-player game, you're really able to watch your opponent and pick things that could hurt them, make sure you don't help them. But when there's a lot of players in Azul, it's really hard to do that. Kind of same thing here. I think in a two-player game, you really could watch that other player and see what they're drafting and make really strong decisions. In a four-player game, I would almost say just do this simultaneously. But that's not what we're doing. So same thing here for the red player. They have a bunch of twos spots here. The wild, the five, the wild, and then down here, the beer supplier. Now they have an additional supplier. So for them, for every one or six that goes on this spot, they're actually gonna get two beers. That's gonna be awesome because the red player is definitely gonna want this one. So like I said, most people would just put it to the side. I just say, let's start planning. Now, once we picked it, we're gonna go ahead and swap the dice back to the blue player. And sure, why not? Let's take a two. Red player, a two is gonna be great for them as well. So let's take that. And we're gonna go ahead and swap those around. So a four and a three really won't do anything super special at this point. They are gonna end up on the wild spaces. Um, and so either way, they're just gonna take one of these. I don't know if I'm gonna go for money or for beer. I don't have to decide right this second. I'll notice I do have this four here that I can assign at any time. Yeah. Let's just put it here for now. I might change my mind. I think the red player is super happy to grab this two as well. And it's a little worthless, but we are gonna swap those coasters. Both players have a three. So I don't know, whatever. While we're here, let's have the red player. No, we'll go, I'll be proper. Let's go in turn order. The blue player will take this three. They could put it anywhere. Uh, I guess we'll go down here. Turns out we're gonna kind of have a wasted die because there is nowhere to put this four. So this die is kind of not gonna do anything for us this round, unfortunately. And the red player is gonna take this three just to try to keep strategies a little bit different here at the beginning. It looks like maybe I'll have the blue player focus on getting coins this round. Let's have the red player focus on getting beer. 
So after the dice drafting, technically everybody would have their dice in a pile, and everyone would spend a little time planning their actions, keeping in mind you can move things around however you want to. And then after everybody's planned, you're ready to go, and again you can swap at any time before you take the actions in player order, we're going to execute all of our actions. Basically we're going to remove the dice and gain their benefits one at a time. <clears throat> this is kind of not one at a time right now because essentially what we're going to do is total up how much money we're going to earn, and then we're going to total up how much beer we're going to earn. We'll spend it if we can. So for the blue player, by removing this die, they get two coins. By removing this one, they get another two coins. So I'm up to four coins right now. By removing this one, I'm going to get five coins, or that's one coin, so I'm up to a total of five. So essentially, right now, the blue player has five coins that they can spend. Let's go look at what they could spend their money on. So, these cards in your deck would just gain an extra beer on that round. These cards, the dishwasher cards, would let you add a dot to any of your dice, um, as long as they're less than six. Like, you can't add a dot to a six. So basically, this would let you add a dot. This lets you roll a die of your own color. This adds an extra table, so that as you're filling it in, you can draw a little bit longer. And this is gonna add how much beer you get on the round. Now I have five coins to spend. I say, let's buy one of these tables. So this table is gonna go face down on top of our draw pile. Basically, we just bought a table. We don't wanna set it up tonight because the, we're busy. But we're gonna set it up tomorrow so that it's there. Awesome, okay, so we got that. I still have this one coin down here. So I essentially have one beer that I could spend this round. The cheapest beer thing that I could buy is three beers, so I'm not gonna be able to buy any guests or recruit any guests into uh, having them come in to eat with me tomorrow. So what I'll just do instead, instead of spending that beer, I'm gonna save it. Right now, we can save up to two beers, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move my marker to show, yeah, I've saved a beer for next round. And that is the end of the blue player's turn. We didn't use this die, so I'm just gonna put it back up there. And technically, all of the players would need to take their turns, and then we would all clean up. I don't see any reason to not clean up right now. So what we're gonna do to show that we're done is I'm just gonna go ahead and take all of my cards, and they're gonna go in a discard pile right there. All right, let's go to the red player. So, really similar idea. Let's figure out how much money we earned. Let's figure out how much beer we earned. We'll spend it if we can. We won't if we can't. I got four coins from those guests. And I'm usually the kind of player who just spends, like I spend them all and let that guide my strategy. So for four coins, let's grab a waitress. And anytime you gain a card, it's gonna go face down on top of your draw pile. Now down here, this one means that I'm gonna get two beers for each die down here. So this is gonna be two beers, and then this one, or this one die is gonna get me an additional beer. I've got three beers to spend, and I'm gonna go ahead and recruit. As I mentioned before, there's a stack of three beer guests. And so you could see this guy's a little more powerful. If we could feed him a, a, a number three die, he's gonna give me three coins, you know, plus the point at the end of the game. So let's put this guy on top of our draw pile. And the red player has used all of their, all of their dice, so we're just gonna go ahead and collect their cards, and those will go into the discard pile as well. So remember, technically all of the players do their actions, as I just demonstrated, one player at a time finishing all of their actions. Once that's done, everybody kind of cleans up their tavern for the night. The round marker is gonna move to round two, and we're gonna pass the first player marker, I'll try to not forget, but we're gonna go to round two, and before we go to round two, you're gonna see that we get to choose between these two bonuses here. Now, players get to choose whatever they want to, but for the purpose of this video, You'll probably see me see you'll probably see me have the blue player pick one thing and the red player pick the other thing just for variety. So let's go talk about these two different things that the players can choose from. The icons that we're showing is that you could take one of these guests, put it on the top of your draw pile for next round. The other one was showing the barracks dude where you could get a beer in the next round. So why don't we stick with kind of the thing that we were going for? Uh, I'll just have the blue player keep thinking about money. I'll have the red player keep thinking about beer. That won't last for long because you're going to see in this game, the more 
you spend your beer, the more money you're gonna take in. The more you spend your money, usually the more beer you're gonna take in. So we're gonna kind of flip flop our strategies as time goes on. Uh, but what I was saying was, yeah, let's have, the, let's have the blue player grab this guy so that they can earn more money. And as per, al as per always, as always, we're gonna put that at top of our drop pile. Let's hand this over to the red player while I'm thinking about it. And I don't know if that's the right play. Well, whatever. Okay. Uh, and I don't like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then the blue player or what? The red player chose this reward. Again, both players could have taken the same reward. Just for this video, I'm going to try to vary it up a little bit. All right. So now we're starting the new round. So remember, the first thing we're going to do once we've passed the first player marker and all of that stuff, we're just going to go ahead, open up the tavern, let people come in. So we're going to start by letting this guy in. We knew that that was going to happen. Oops, this guy goes here. This is the one card that doesn't match the background that it goes next to, which is a little disappointing. All right, we're going to flip this one. We also knew this was coming. He's going to eat at this table right here. We're going to flip this card. Awesome, we got a waitress. So the waitress is going to go right there. And we've got a one guest. And we've got an empty table. Awesome. And we've got another waitress. I love it. And now we need to shuffle this up. And keep going until we fill up our tables. So next up, okay, fill that table there. And finally fill up that table. Pretty good uh, draws for the red player. All right, let's go open up the blue player's tavern and see what they get. All right, their first card is that person. We knew that was gonna happen. We knew we were getting an empty table. That's what I purchased earlier. Awesome, we've got a beer supplier down here. We've got another guest right there, a guest, and a guest. Now I'm not gonna shuffle these because I'm gonna be buying some stuff and that's gonna go down here first. So you only, my understanding is you only shuffle the discard pile when you need to draw something and it's not there. That's not where I am right now. I'm good, I'm done. So that's the end of the fill up the taverns phase. Next up, we're gonna all roll our dice. Okay, oh, some sixes, okay, so that's good stuff. Good stuff right there. Roll the dice. Okay, two, two, and five. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draft those dice. Pretty good options here. Uh, kind of want this five, but there's another five over there. I don't know, hmm. I, there just aren't that many fives, but there's all of these twos. Yeah, let's do it, let's take that five. Remember, this part is happening in player order. So red player would draft something and then that would leave the blue player a chance to guess. Ones and sixes are gonna be great for them because that's two beers each. So let's do take the six because if the one's left over, I could either put it here or here. We've got options. Oh, that three is also good. Ugh. Well, wow, that is changing my thought because I do want that three and I know the red player wants that three as well. And it doesn't matter. The red player could either take the one or the six. I'll still be okay. Okay, I am gonna take that three actually. Sweet. Okay, next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and swap those coasters. The ones and the sixes are kind of tempting, but they're only one beer each for me this turn. So it's like, ugh, and I am kind of mad about that three. All right, let's see, let's go for, we took a five before. Let's go for another five. Let's move our monastery disc up. I haven't really focused on the monastery disc in my practice playthroughs, so this could be fun. We'll see what happens. The blue player is totally stuck with the two. They actually don't have anywhere to put the two except for those wild spots. So, I don't know, probably there. And we're gonna swap the coasters and I just realized I totally forgot something. Of course I did, that's how I function. The red player should have rolled two dice, one for each waitress. So let's roll those so I know what we've got. Okay, we got ones and twos. The one could come down for beer or maybe up at the table. I don't know, this is all very flexible. Uh, but we do have another two, so let's take a two and probably plan on using it up there. And between the one and the six, I'm not sure it totally matters which one of these I take. Uh, 
it doesn't matter what I leave for the red player. They'll get the same advantage either way, I think. So let's take a six. Why not? And that's going to finalize this way. They'll take the one. Not sure if I'm going to go. I mean, we're going for a bunch of money. Maybe we'll just go for money this round and ignore the beers altogether. And with this two, I mean, we don't have any twos up here. I guess we could put this down on the wild spot. Yeah, that sounds reasonable enough. And now that's going to bring us to the red player taking care of their actions. So mostly we're going to deal with money, some monastery stuff, and we have one beer. So this card is just, we just get one beer this round. Nothing to do with dice. It's a beer. I can't spend one beer on anything. So let's just put that in our supply and we'll get rid of that card. Let's go ahead and move our monastery disc up twice. So that's going to go one, two. And when you hit or pass this spot, you get another one of these cards. So I'm hoping this will be good for next round. Hopefully I've got a bunch of beer there at the top, plus my saved beer is awesome. Now my coins, looks like I've got two, four, five, six money to spend. Let's see, how do I want to spend six money? Ooh, well, hmm. I am going to do this, but I want to talk about another option I could almost do uh, that I haven't really talked about yet. So let's do grab this thing this thing. He has a name, you know. All right, he's going there. So something I haven't talked about very much is that you can upgrade these pieces. To upgrade this top piece is going to cost 15 coins and it would gain you another table. If you upgrade your cash register, it's going to cost you 10 coins, but instead of gaining one coin per die, you would get three coins for the one die you put here. If you spent 12 coins, you could upgrade this thing and you would be able to move up the monastery track twice instead of once. Uh, if you paid 12 coins, then you would flip this thing over and have a permanent waitress, so you would always be rolling one of your dice. If you flip this one over, you would have a permanent dishwasher to always be able to add a pip to one of your dice. If you pay six coins, instead of only being able to hold up to two money, you'd be able to hold up to five. If you pay nine coins, you'd flip this thing over, and instead of getting one beer per queue or per die, you'd get two. And if you spend 18, you could upgrade this thing, and you would get two beers per die put over here. And seven, you'd be able to upgrade your, your beer supply. So, so these are all things that can be flipped. And remember, not only do you get the advantage that comes by flipping it, you would gain a royal card, which is 10 points at the end of the game. Now, there is this interesting thing. I want you to take a look here. There's this 12, and then there's this little minus 4. Essentially, what that's saying is, if you have waitresses out here, you could put these back into the general supply, and it's almost like getting that money back, kind of. So these were 4 coins each. I could put these, one or both of them, in the general supply, and put that 4 coins each towards this cost. So right now, this thing costs 12. I could discard both of these, and have a permanent waitress, and I would only have to spend four coins. In fact, am I being dumb? I mean, I, I had six coins, right? Kind of do want that permanent waitress to always have that. Ooh, okay, here's what I am gonna do, just because I think it's fun. I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back, and I'm gonna pick up this two coin card, and I have four coins left over. I'm gonna put these two waitresses back in the general supply so that this costs 12 minus 8 coins, so that was 4 coins, and now I flip this over, and for the rest of the game, I'm going to have one of my dice available. I'll put it here so I don't forget, maybe. And because I flipped something over, I get a royal on top of my deck. All right, that was the red player's turn. Like I said, normally everybody does their turns, then everybody cleans up, but I'm going to go ahead and clean up now. All right, what does our blue player got? Um, yeah, I think, all right, so remember, I have this beer if I want it. So I have one beer here and two beers. So I have two, three, four, if I want to spend that one. And I say, let's do it. Let's get one of these four beer people. Now these four cards, once, okay, what should I say, sorry. On a turn, you can only draft one of these people. So you can't, you can't, if you had 10 beers, you couldn't get two cards. You can only get one. And as soon as we take it, we're going to refill it because we can't even get anybody else if we wanted to. So 
We're going to take this back and it's going to go right here on top of my draw pile. And that was the beers. And wait, that was four, right? So that was one, two, three, four. And now I have three, four coins to spend. I could save up to two of them if I wanted to. Let's spend them though. Now you can buy multiples of these cards, but not of the same card. So if I had five coins, I could get one of these and one of these, but I couldn't get two of those. So where I have four coins, like I said, my style is usually just buy what you can. Let's take a waitress. And that's gonna go there. And now we're gonna do a quick cleanup. Let's discard all of these cards here. And that's gonna bring us to round three. So for round three, I can choose to either use one of my own dice or I can pick up a dishwasher. So let's have the red player, like I said, I'm just doing this for the video. Let's have the red player use another die, like they're gonna have lots of dice this round and let's have the blue player get a dishwasher. So the red player will do this. Let's pass this while we're here. And as I said, the blue player is gonna get a dishwasher. So we'll put that right there. And now we're on round three, so we're gonna fill up our cavern. What cavern? This is a tavern. And we already know dishwasher is first. They're gonna come down here. And then we have our waitress. She's gonna go right here. Oh man. And then we have a guest who's gonna go right there. And now there's no cards there to draw, so I'm gonna take these. We're gonna give them a quick shuffle, as good as I can and put this here and let's keep filling up we just opened up our tavern i still have this guest here i could use probably end up using it eh, we'll see for the monastery i have no idea all right so we got a guest here and a guest there so again if i wanted to i could discard this redraw but i feel like that's reasonable and so i don't forget let's bring this die down here so the red player opens up their doors, in comes a royal. Now I'm gonna talk about why royals are special. I guess I'll talk about it now. All of the other guests take up one table, but royals like to sit together. So if I had a bunch of royals show up, they're not gonna take up extra space. All of the royals will go at to the same table. So that's kind of a nice thing there. And you put a two there and get two coins. So not a ton of money, they're not good tippers, but they are lots of points. They bring up your reputation a lot. All right, so this guy goes over here. Uh, this guy is gonna go over here. We've got this fella and that fella. And that will be the end of the red players. Uh, oh, what, uh, whatever that phase is called. So while we're here, let's go ahead and roll the dice. And we've got these white dice go here. I've got this two and this four. I'll get to decide what to do with those a little bit later. And we'll have the blue player roll their dice. Oops. And we've got this two um, here. Oh, I don't have any places to put twos again. Darn it. Okay. And now we're gonna enter the dice drafting phase. Okay, blue player. I think the obvious answer here is this four. Let's step, well, there are fours coming. So maybe I hold off on the four. And is there anything else that I could really, really definitely need? I don't have great options here. Uh, let's take a one. Yeah, let's take a one. I don't know. Sure, why not? And I do wanna say, as a reminder, that at some point I can add a pip to a die and my choices aren't set. I can move things around, so I'll keep that in mind. The red player could try to keep a four away from the blue player, but there's another four there, so not a lot of good that would do anybody. A one isn't all that great, but at least I have places I could put a one. <laughs> Excuse me. So, mm, yeah, okay, let's go here. Sorry, the hiccup distracted me. Now we're gonna rotate the dice. The blue player is gonna grab one of those fours. I think the red player would like, well, we've already got a two. Ah, I got dice I don't know what to do with this round. Hmm, do I want that two? No, there's nowhere to put that two. I mean, I could put something here. I got a three and a four on the way. Wow, this is gonna be rough. I'm glad I have these extra dice, but I don't have a lot of things to do with them. I'm kind of in a pickle right now. Ah, okay. 
Just sure, take a three. Oops, I forgot to rotate those dice. Okay, so what the what the blue player is going to do is they're actually going to put a die a four on this five by using this. So we should be able to track. Yep, I've added one pip because this guy is here and shouldn't really be there. I usually like to kind of turn this if I can, just to remind myself that I've used it. All right, what's the red player doing? Still stuck with no good options at all. Uh, yeah, it doesn't even matter what I take because I can't put anything anywhere else. All right, so we rotate. Not sure where I want to put this three. If I'm going for money or beer, I've got this two. Oh, I guess, yeah, it won't matter. We'll do something like that. And this two is not going to be useful. All right, so let's go ahead and see what the blue player's doing. They're going to get two beers this round, which is not enough to do anything. So we'll just store the two beers. But they're going to get, oh, let's go, let's go do this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move my monastery disc up once, and I'll discard this to move it up a second time. That will put me here, and I'll get one of those cards. And this will go face up on my discard pile. And then I've got four, five, yeah, I've got five money to spend. And with that, let's get an extra table. Okay, then we're going to clean up by putting these in the discard pile. Oops. And, all right, so we didn't use these dice at all. Uh, I've got three coins, unless I wanted four coins, but I think I'd like to keep that with the beer. So for three coins, let's take one of, oh, it's coins. I always get those mixed up. So for three coins, I could get a dishwasher, that's three, but I'm really liking this beer train I'm riding. So I'm gonna grab this. I know that's a waste of, well, that's only two coins. Let's save the other coin. Sure. And then for beer, I got one, two, those don't need dice. So one, two, three, four. So I've got four beers. Let's grab another one of these and refill. And that's gonna go right here. All right, just a little bit of cleanup everybody everywhere and I did spend that beer and these will go here and that's gonna bring us to the next round where we're each gonna get one of those same guests from before and all right I don't know where I put this okay I don't ah, okay cool all right, new round, round four. We this is After this round, we'll be halfway through the game. Let's open up our tavern, let people in. There's the guests we uh, purchased. There's the beer we purchased. There's, oh, what am I doing? Sorry. There's a new guest and a new guest. Ooh, that's not great, but we'll keep it. Okay, fill it up for blue. Ooh, nice, an empty table. I like those. We've got a beer dude. We got a beer supplier dude. Oh man, I'm making a mess. It's just tricky to get this in the right place for the camera. We got a guest and a waitress. Wow, this is going to be a great round for blue. And uh, a guest. And oh my gosh, another table. A guest. A guest. And a guest. Yes, let's keep that. That's great. Okay, we're going to roll these dice. Wow, three twos and a four. Before I forget, let's bring this die down here. Oh, in fact, here, here's the blue die. <laughs> Another two. That's hilarious. Okay, so we'll roll this one, a three, and then we'll roll these ones. We got two sixes, a two, and a one. All right, what is the red player going to do? I really don't know. Uh, I mean, ones and sixes are just one beer this round, not stellar. The other option's a two, but I have plenty of twos coming my way. So let's, I don't, I mean, this is kind of keeping it from the other player, but not totally. Yeah, all right, let's do it. I don't see any use for my four, and I don't have an extra pip to add to anything. I've got this two, oops. That two, where, sure. 
Uh, yeah, the four just doesn't do anything, but I guess I could get as much money as possible. Now let's switch these around. A four would be, oh yeah, see, it's a little tricky to do this by myself, but yeah, a four would be great. In theory, maybe the blue player would have held that, but they couldn't have done anything with it, so yeah, who knows. I definitely like either the one or the six. Let's take the six and swap those out. Oh, ooh. do we take the two because it helps us or do we take the one because it would hurt the blue player? Ah, let's take the two because it helps us. They take the two because they have to. And then we swap and we get this two and blue gets the one probably down here with the beer. Yeah, let's straighten that up. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. All right, where do I wanna put this three? Let's see, I'm gonna get four, five, six, so wait, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, I could do another upgrade. That could be cool. Um, hmm, in fact, if I put this here, I would have, ten, wait, six, six, seven, eight. Oh no, that's only nine. Oh, I was hoping to have 10 to upgrade that. But it's not a bad idea to upgrade this one for nine. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna spend my nine coins. Oh, I do have a 10th. I forgot, okay, I have that 10th, sweet. We're gonna upgrade this one. And because I did an upgrade, I'm gonna get a royal. And then I have one beer, can't do anything. Oh, I have two beers, still can't do anything with those. So I will store those two beers. And I think that's all I'm doing. So let's just do a quick cleanup. Okay, so the blue player has two beers here, a third, and then this is four. So I've got seven beers right now. That's pretty awesome. If I had nine beers, I could get a royal, but I don't. The most valuable guy, oh, do you know what? I do want this guy. So this guy is worth six. Now you only put threes on him and he gives you three money, but he has an immediate effect. So when you draw this, you do this thing immediately. So let's refill this and then go talk about what this icon means. This means you can get rid of a guest permanently. And so this is like a way to cull your deck a little bit. Yeah, I do wanna do this. Uh, you can't get rid of a, uh, of a guest that has a die on them, but you could spend the die first and then get rid of them. Either way, I wanna get rid of this worthless one. So that goes out of the game permanently. All right, so that was my beers. How much? That was six out of my seven. So I still have one beer left over. Cool. And then I've got two for six money. Uh, yeah, okay, so what? I've got six money. I'm gonna store one of those, and I'm picking up a table. I love the tables. So that's gonna go there, and everything else is gonna get discarded. Yeah? Yeah. Round five, somebody can, or you can either choose between a table or a beer supplier. Let's stay with what our players have kind of been doing. That would be a supplier for the red player. Let's take this over. And a table for the blue player. And with that, let's open up shop. We've got some tables coming, that's very awesome. Hopefully I have space on the camera. We've got our guest. Remember, this only happens when you recruit them, so not after that. We've got another table, <laughs> I love it. We've got a guest, now we're empty, so we're gonna shuffle this up. And, uh, sure, something like that. Okay, keep filling. We're gonna be filling for a little while, I'm guessing, unless I just jinxed it. We're gonna go, oh, uh, beer. We've got a guest and another guest. Okay, I was hoping to get more stuff down here. Didn't quite get there, but that's okay. We'll see what happens in the dice drafting phase. Let's go fill up the red tavern. Blue's encroaching on our space over here. It's really rude. All right, beer supplier. We've got a noble. We've got another supplier. So each die down here is gonna be three beers. That's pretty cool. Then we're gonna go ahead and shuffle all of these cards. Something like that. Keep filling. Okay, so remember, nobles always sit together. They don't take up extra table space. We've got another beer. 
We've got an extra table. Good, we're going to need it. We've got this here, another guest, and another beer, and another beer. I love it. And another guest. And I need to not forget, I have this. Okay, let's, here, let's roll that. Oh, a three. And then we've got these dice here. Uh, yeah, I definitely would like that six. Well, we'll come back to that in just a second. Okay, so we'll roll these. Oops, I think I'm off camera. No, I'm pretty close. All right, what do I want? Well, I really want to keep that six away from the red player because those are powerful for the red player. But I also want, well, I do have threes, and there's a three coming my way. Do I just keep that six away from the red player? Probably. And the five could move us up the monastery track. You know, that's like a so-so endeavor. Uh, no, let's keep the six. We got to keep that six away from red. And we are taking the six. Let's do a little swap a here. Let's see. Threes are good. Yeah, threes are good. And a three is good for this player as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a three. Is there any reason I'd want that five? I mean, here, again, move myself up twice. Ooh, maybe. Uh, well, yeah, if I take this five, I could definitely get the three back. So yeah, let's do take this five. Oops, and then I need to swap. Obviously, that's going to give the blue player a three. Let's see, between a two and a four, neither of them, well, a two would help out the blue player more than a four would. And either way, I mean, for me, it's, it is what it is. So I guess I'll take this two. Okay, I could put that there. I could put that there. It, will, it won't matter. Yeah, because we're swapping. I'll have a three for the next one. So, I mean, we got this four. Not totally sure where to put that four. Probably with the money. I'll have one, two, three. Maybe with the beers. I got six money. Seven if I want it. Okay, let me think about it. And we've got this three. It's coming down here. All right, we're falling behind on noble acquisition. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to spend our seven money upgrading this thing here. I haven't been using my beer storage all that much, but it could be nice to start saving up my beer. I think I had one, right? Yeah, you keep whatever amount you had. I think I had one before. All right, so that was my money, and I need to grab a royal for that. And then I had one, two, three, four beers. And for four beers, let's do recruit just a four person. Oh, I should go up there. Any? Oh, sorry. This goes here. Fill this up. And that was the blue player's turn. Okay, for the red player, I am going to go ahead and move myself up twice on the monastery track. So I'm getting rid of that. And this will be good because I can then discard a guest that doesn't have a die on them. Why am I focused on that? Sometimes my brain does that. Okay. Um, next up, we've got money, and we have we have a lot of beer. So we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that's a shame. If I could get a ninth, I could get another royal. But if I keep this with the money, I would have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What could I do with eight money? I'm trying to decide if I want the three coins or the one beer. The one beer would get me another royal, which would be awesome. But the uh, eight coins, what would eight coins do for me? Well, eight coins could get me a table. A table, I could go for seven. Oh, that would be five. Oh, all right. We're just going to do it. I'm going to come down here so that I have one. I don't think this is smart, but I'm doing it anyway. Why am I doing this? I don't know. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine beers. And the red player is just trying to get this noble here. So we'll put that there. That might have been a silly, silly move. But for five coins, I'm going to buy a table. All right. And then we'll do, oh, I didn't clean up the blue player. What is this? Who am I? All right. Something, something 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 
like that. Let's get that blue player cleaned up here. We're being sloppy. Okay. Oh my gosh, why am I str I don't, I mean, I have my other hand, but it's hard to wrap it around that tripod. Okay, here we are, round six. We're both getting these, and this is passing, and we'll put that there. Okay, here we are. Let's go ahead and start filling things up. I know I've got my table. I've got my royal. I've got this guy. I've got beer. I don't like that. Okay, I've got guest and I've got a guest. Not a stellar round. That's actually, ooh, I do like that I have the table. Ah, I don't know. That's not great. I don't know if I should discard this in order to try again. Hmm, we'll leave it. Okay, blue, I've got two of those tokens, so that's pretty awesome. Okay, we got a guest, a royal, we've got our waitress. Oh, uh, I'm moving a red die so I don't forget, because I know I will. Uh, we've got another guest. That wasn't great, not compared to what the blue player can do. So they're gonna discard this to discard these, and we're gonna go again. I didn't love that. All right, let's try that again. So, good, table, guest, I'm making a mess. Waitress, I'm glad we got her back. Uh, another table, this is looking a lot better. We've got a dishwasher. We've got a beer, so yeah, this is great. Okay, beer supplier, a guest. Now we're gonna take these, shuffle them up, and sure, there we go. Next up, a guest, a guest, and a guest. Let's, while we're here, go ahead and roll the dice. And we'll roll this die too. Oh, I, feel, I feel like I am rolling that, hold on. I don't, I didn't even look to see if a two is good or not. I just feel like I'm not rolling it sturdily. All right, so we got those. Here, I'll be proper. Okay, we got a one. And then here, a one, a one, okay. Not a lot of beer things going on down here. So this one, not sure where I want to put it. Ooh, what number do I even want? Probably this four. I think I want that four. A four would be awesome. Um, I don't have a one or a six, so there's that conundrum. Uh, three is okay, but not as good as the four. All right, let's take, let's take a four. Oops, I forgot to move the dice. All right, I am thinking of those options, I guess I could do something with the five. And I definitely want the one. So we're gonna change these out. Ooh, a three or a two. Let's see, the, the blue player could use that three. I could use the two though. Hmm, I don't know, yeah. We'll take the two. Oh, and I didn't, the red player, I didn't see this, but that is what it is. We're gonna take that four as well. Go ahead and swap these meaninglessly because they are both threes. And I don't know. Okay, I got this three here. Obviously I could put any die down here. I could put something here. Sure, why not? And I got this three here. I forgot that I have this add a pip, but I don't know that I need to or that I want to necessarily. Things are pretty full. I do have this three sitting here. I don't know, what could I do with that? Nothing? I'm getting lots of money this turn. That's exciting for me. Let's make, I don't know, probably here, but I don't really know. All right, so let's have the red player go ahead and move up the monastery track. For better or worse, I'm gonna do this again. The thing that I'm eyeballing is that I'm moving up twice now. I'll get a dishwasher, like fine, whatever. But two more spaces, if I can do that, I'll get another royal. So I'll get a dishwasher for now, hope for the best later. 
So that goes there. Uh, all right, so this is gonna be six, seven, eight, nine, if I stick with this plan. For nine, I could upgrade that one. I could upgrade this one. That would even be, yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna upgrade this thing for nine, which gets me a royal, because I upgraded. And this the, the timing does matter. This is upgraded, so this is gonna be uh, two beers as long as I'm doing my thinking correctly and I think I am obviously uh, Okay, so that's two three beers. Let's do spend them because I can't store them on this guy here All right, there you go. Okay. We got money. We got seven eleven twelve money. I could get a waitress I could discard this waitress and make it only eight so I'd have four money left over and get another waitress I think that's what I'll do. I'll discard this waitress so that it only costs eight, and then I'll pick up <laughs> this waitress. Does that even make sense? I guess I could have just paid the 12. It didn't make sense. I don't know why I did that. But I upgraded, I got a royal, put that there, and that was my money. Uh, oh, what am I doing? Now I have two beers. Which I can't really do anything with, so I'll just store those two beers. Oh, I didn't clean up there. What is wrong with me? I was doing so good at cleaning up on cue, but not lately. All right. And we'll go this way. Clean up. Clean up. Everybody. Everywhere. Okay, now we're on round seven. So, same decision. Well, so one person, well... You could choose between getting a personal die or a beer. I, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to go personal die for each of them. So I got my waitress, and then I'll take another one. And same thing over here. They've got their waitress now, and the other one. It is the blue player starting, so let's just hand this over here. We are, right? Yeah. We're going to go ahead and start filling up our tavern. So we got a royal. We got a guest. And we got a royal. Come on, I need other cards. And we got our waitress. Okay, that's good. So what, maximum you can have three of your own dice. So there it is. Okay, good. I'm glad we got another table. We got a guest. We got a guest. Okay, something like that. That's the blue player. It's really not a stellar start. I'm wondering if I want to do that again. We're so late in the game and I have to have good rounds for the blue player. I think we are going to do that again. Okay, let's try that one more time. I know I've got great cards in there and those ones were not were not my favorites. Okay, good. Beer. Oh, okay. We got guest. If this is worse. I'm going to be very upset. We got a table. We got, okay, good. Now we got a table. I'm liking this a lot better. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I really wanna get a whole lot of beers if I can. If I could get a ton of beers and get a bunch of royals, that would be sweet. All right, got a guest. Come on, blue player. We got a guest uh, and a table and a royal. And uh, I guessed, dang it. I really wanted high beer production, but I didn't get it. Oh, this has been bumped. I don't know if this is a zero or a one. I'm gonna guess it was a zero and I'll annotate if I need to. All right, uh, so we've got a guest. We've got a royal. I really should have upgraded this thing back here. I don't know that I've had enough money to do that yet, but it's a good thing. Oh, crap. I don't have that anymore, so it is what it is. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to roll these dice. Okay, holy one, Batman. But neither of us are, like, doing any beer production. That's crazy. Wow. Okay, this is not going to be a great round for red. That's, that's for darn toots. Okay, so for blue... Uh, okay, what am I doing? Sorry. 
I all of a sudden was thinking about work today. It was a long day. All right, that's what the blue player has. They're starting us off. What are they drafting? Only one, twos, and threes up here. Not a lot of beer production. That's pretty frustrating and disappointing. I mean, I could get up to five. That's something. There's a good three-point guest up there, and I'm, I think I'm behind on points. So, yeah. Okay, let's take this one. I need to remember I've got a dishwasher. I often forget that. Uh, only threes and twos. Wow, that's disappointing. I guess we'll take that three. We'll shuffle these dice around. Oops, I think that was a four. It fell off. Okay. Obviously, we're taking a one. Wahoo. I guess let's take this two. Right? Sure. And then we'll swap those around. <sighs> okay, so we could do another beer there. A four and a five. Doesn't matter. Let's take a five because maybe I'll want to do that. Obviously, I've got a one. I can add a pip to that, though. So that's that. I'll try to remember I did that. Go ahead and swap those around. I'm going to make more beer than I thought that I was, probably, if I decide to keep all of this here. And this four. Okay, so sure, that would be great. Sure, that would be great. And a four. I guess I could add to my beer production, probably. Okay, let's go ahead and move up the monastery track. That's just going to put us there. Nothing too exciting happening. Now, did I produce enough beer to get a royal? So four, five, six, seven. Dang it. Maybe I should just save that. Maybe I should save that for next round. That's probably what I should do. I can save up to five. So, okay, so I'm at, I have one, two, three. Okay, I have five. I have five coming in. So I could go one, two, three and have two left over? That doesn't make sense. Let's go here to have three left over or should I just spend it on that three point dude? Oh, maybe I should spend it on that three point dude. Yeah, okay, where was I? Here, let's do spend, let's spend the five of these. Oh, why was this over here? Did I spend that? I don't think I spent that. Why was that there? Sorry, I lost track. All right, so what did I have? I had, I had these. And this was a five, right? Okay, so let me think. So that would be, I just wanted, I wanted nine, but I don't think I'm getting nine. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna spend the five. This is what I was gonna do. And then we'll save one more. Spend the five to, what in the mess? I don't know how or why that happened to get this one, because that's gonna be three points. And then I have one left over that we'll store there. Yeah, I don't know. I think I messed that up accidentally. I promise it was an accident. Okay, so we've got all of these things collected here. Sure, sure. Oops, one more. Okay, only, well, two beers going into storage. Great. Once up the monastery track. Oh, this can go here. One more, I get a royal. And now I've got three, six, I got 10 coins. How do I want to spend those 10 coins? I kind of want a table, but also can I upgrade something wisely? I don't love the dishwasher all that much, but seems like I could do that. I could discard this and that would cost six and I'd have four coins. Oof. But I'd rather have a table. I really want a table. That would be five coins. So can I upgrade anything for five coins? I could upgrade this for six and get a waitress. Let's, I guess we'll do that. I'm not thrilled about that idea, but it does get me a royal and it does get me a waitress. All right. That's that. That's going to bring us to cleaning that up. Ooh, okay. Oh, that needs to get cleaned up too. Uh, let's put that there. Okay, so this means you get to upgrade a piece, but you don't get a royal for this upgrade. 
I think where this is the last round, we both are going to want to upgrade our tables. Let's definitely, definitely do that. So upgrade that table. I really should have been doing that earlier. Like having a tables, I, I could have done that earlier. I just wasn't thinking about it all those times I had all of those tables. That's okay. Pass this over. And we're going to go ahead and start flipping for the uh, red player. This is our last time. Okay, so we're going to have two dice. We're going to have Royals, a guest, uh, a guest. Oh, no, this is not looking stellar. All right, we'll see. Uh, yeah. Something. Oh, my gosh. What is wrong with me? And let's do one more time. Want to make sure this is good for the final round. And ah, a guest. Okay. That was the red player. We can't do anything about it. So that is how it stands. Blue. Let's shuffle people in. Okay. So we've got a guest, a waitress, a royal, a waitress, a guest, a table. Awesome. A uh, guest and a guest. Okay, and blue can't do anything about that either, so that's going to stay as it stands. Okay, there's those dice. We've got these ones over here. Uh, oh, I think I knocked that. I can't tell. I'll have to watch. It doesn't matter. I think that's what it was. Okay. Let's see. We've got those. Those. Okay, red is starting our draft. Ugh, guys, I am not thrilled with any of that stuff. Yeah, wow, this hurts. I, I don't even see the point in producing beer necessarily. I'm never going to get to nine on this round. So I guess I'll take a two. Okay, so they've got their four covered. I think they're going to definitely want this five. Yeah, let's take that five. Go ahead and switch this up. Uh, they want the five as well, because that's going to be a royal. So 10 points. Yeah, they're going to definitely need that five. Oh, man. Okay, so I've got these twos if I decide to put those there. I could produce a beer. I guess that's something. Mm, it's something. It's not great, but it's something. So then we're going to swap those. I guess we'll take a two. They're going to take a one. We're going to see if we can make the best out of this situation. And then we're going to swap those around. Chances are good that's going to go right there. What else have I got? Oh, I forgot I had this five. All right. Um, hmm. I was not paying very close attention. Well, hmm. I don't know. I guess it doesn't totally matter. Uh, I'll have a wasted die, I guess. And not sure, probably there. All right, let's check this out. So that's going to be two beers, plus I have two. So four beers um, will get me this person here. At this point, we're just clamoring for points, really. And then let's move up the monastery track. Because that's going to earn a royal. So here it is. Red's got a lot of royals. I think they might have this one in the bag. All right. So then we got three, four, five, six, seven coins. Uh, the best way to spend those coins, if I could upgrade. Oh, let's upgrade this seven coins because that's another 10 points. I think red really probably kicked some butt on this one. And that was all of the dice. I guess at this point, discard or draw pile doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go finish up the blue turn. So they're going to get one, uh, two, three, plus another three. Ah, six beers. Dang it. Not stellar. Not stellar. But here, I'm just reaching up. Well, so there's this guy, but he's only worth one point. Would give me that card, which is worth uh, two points. So that's three points altogether. Or I could get this one 
for three points. So I guess it's a wash. We'll take we'll take this one. And then for our money, uh, that's gonna be oh wow five. This is a lot. Okay, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait, seven, eleven, thirteen money. That's not too bad. Uh, thirteen money. What could I do with that? I guess I could go for the cheapest thing. Yeah, okay, so I guess I'm gonna do this. That will get me a royal. That was six. And then I can get uh, seven, seven coins worth of stuff. So I'll get these, that's two points each. All right, so that's the end of the blue player's turn. What happens at this point is we're just gonna do a, a regular cleanup kind of a thing. But basically, we're just going to count all of our points in our deck and see how we did. All right. Here, I'm going to use my other hand. It's going to be very exciting. Okay. So usually the way I do this is I just make piles of 10. So I've got 2, 4, 5, uh, 4, so that's 9. Okay, so there's 10 points there. There's 10. So we got 5, 3, another 5. Okay, so there's 10 points there. Oops, so we got 10, 10, and then we got one, two, three. Oh, there's another 10, nice. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 points there. All right, so the blue player ended up with 60 points. Well, I think the red player had six royals, or they were pretty close to it. But the red, the blue player is getting a lot more cards. Eh, we'll see. All right, so we got two, three. Oh, let's see, that's five, uh, six, seven. So that's fifty right there. Eight, nine, ten. So that's sixty points for the red player. Wow, they weren't that far ahead. Oh, there it is. 70, 80, and then we've got 86. 86 points for red. I don't really know what my deal was with that stuff, but it's uh, red kicked butt. I was really trying to get, I don't know, my strategies were all over the place. I really wanted somebody to start getting a whole bunch of beer production. It just didn't happen in this game. That's okay. But that was something that I was going for. Uh, yeah, anyway, nice job, Red. I thought, for a second, I thought it was close, but it wasn't that close at all. So, there you go. That is the Taverns of Tiefenthal. Let me just do a couple of quick thoughts, and then I'm going to clean up and film uh, a video where I play with all of the modules involved. So, that's going to lend into some of my thoughts. I do like this game. I think this is a really interesting way to do a deck builder and a dice drafter. Those are two of my favorite mechanisms ever. Dice and cards. Sorry, dice drafting and deck building. I love it. Um, I do think that the base really should just be considered an introductory. I don't think there's enough going on here to hold people's attention for too long. So yeah, I, I genuinely think that the base is good, but that there's not enough going on to hold interest. Um, what else do I think? Uh, yeah, so like, I think the monastery track is pretty good, but you could see blue wasn't even close to getting a royal, and red did get a royal, and obviously I could have gotten more. Um, it just didn't happen. Uh, okay, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that Quacks of Quedlinburg has become one of my favorite games. It is so tense, so fun. I love it. The thing that I wish this game had is this. Uh, so in that opening stage where you're filling in your tables, I really wish there was, I've been thinking about this, I wish there was a press your luck aspect. And here's how I wish that they did it. And, and I realize there's ways that, could, that, that this can break, uh, but I, I'm still going to express what I feel. I wish there was this thing where you could fill up all of your tables and you could keep drawing and press your luck. Now here's the press your luck aspect. If you draw a guest that can't fit, you don't have space for it. So if your next, if you filled up your tables and your next draw is a guest, there should be some kind of a consequence. And I don't know what that consequence would be. In my brain, you would remove whoever was sitting at this table and your turn is over. Or 
or you'd lose something. Maybe you'd lose, I don't know, you'd lose something by not being able to seat a guest that wanted to come in. I wish there was something like that in there. I know this is a different design than Quacks, but that is such a fun part of Quacks. Of course I want that to be in other games. And so that was my thought. Yeah, draw to fill up your tables, but there's no choice there. You're programmed. You fill up things and then you stop. It just depends on your shuffle. Now there is that aspect where you can discard these and try again, but man, I just wish there was some kind of a pressure luck where that excitement of, you have your tables filled up. Are you going to draw another guest or are you going to draw a table giving you more time to put another guest down? Like, oh, I think that'd be so, 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 so much fun. Anyway, so that's my feelings about the base game. I do think that the modules add a lot more variety here. So I'm excited to show you that. If you want to see all of the modules played, that's going to be in my other video. Check out the description of this video. Anyway, I'm going to go get ready to do that. Thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you later. Goodbye.